artist. If you're new to my art channel, here I give you a glimpse to the things I make as an artist and how I make them. I also want to do more videos about inspiration and how to use what's around you for creative purposes. Today I'm going to MoCo, Barcelona. MoCo is the modern and contemporary MoCo. It's a museum for modern and contemporary art. It's just recently opened here in Barcelona. I have never been there, so I'm really excited to go. My intention is to give you a full review of the exhibition, of what I think about it, you know, whether it's worth it. I'll just show you, you know, the good, the bad, everything. I hope it's going to be fun, I hope it's going to be inspiring. So, yeah, let's go to Moco Barcelona. So, Moco is basically the new kid on the block. It just opened in Barcelona in October. We're right now in January 2022. The first thing I noticed when getting in is that actually MoCo is in the same building as the Picasso Museum. It's in the Barrio Gotico, which is the Gothic quarter of Barcelona. It's basically old town Barcelona. The streets are super narrow, everything is very historic. I actually really like this side of the city. It's so beautiful and I'm just so in love with the gothic architecture all around. It's really a treat. Moco's collection is supposed to include the most sounding names in contemporary art, artists like Basquiat, like Banksy, Warhol, I heard even Dali is included in this collection, so let's delve into this new space. I would say the museum was actually pretty full and my impression was that most people there spoke English. In the end, seeing museums is a classic touristic thing and Barcelona is a touristic city after all. You can definitely feel that the drive behind MoCo is the intention to officially break with those boundaries between the art that is museum worthy and street art. In the collection you see living street art stars like Banksy and Coz alongside the previous generation of what MoCo calls MoCo masters. Artists like Herring, like Basquiat, even Warhol and they are all concentrated in this room from which you can enter. The first thing visitors see when they step inside is a mosaic made from Rubik's cubes by French artist Invader. I've heard a couple of people actually in the queue waiting to get in and saying super excited, you know, oh my god, it's made from cubes. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that you'll see in these museums going forward. The museum pieces and language is super accessible, it's bold, it's immediate. You don't have to think much to kind of get the meaning because modern art plays with the pixels, with everything that kind of fills our screens, with social media, with contemporary fashion, street art, graffiti. So even if some pieces may have a deeper meaning, the artistic language that you find is super recognizable and easy to understand for anyone who lives in the 21st century. One thing that I found super cool and that I just haven't seen in any museum before was the prevalence in every painting of acrylics. 100% of this floor was made up of acrylic paintings. And I personally really enjoy that, as I also mostly work with acrylics, seeing them as a valued material to make incredible art is so rewarding and rare. When it comes to the MoCo temporary collections, I absolutely loved Guillermo Lorca's exhibition, Esplendor de la Noche, or Night Splendor. His paintings are romantic, surreal, and were really attractive and surprising to me at the same time, especially for their mix of beautiful and brutal, where wild animals and young, angelic girls live in a fairy tale gone horror movie type painting. MoCo also has Europe's first NFT exhibition. These crypto assets, they are obviously the, the latest revolution in the digital art scene. To be honest, I understand the kind of educational aspect of it, let's say, but it was not my favorite part of the whole museum because let's be real, no one really comes to a museum to see an NFT, or, or did you? <laughs> Um, when you get up the first floor, you're also in for a treat. You've got the social media sensation of the moment in the city, which is this digital immersive art exhibition by Studio Irma. Their installation at the MoCo is 
easily comparable to Kusama's infinity rooms. Kusama herself is only represented in the museum by her painting Night Stars, which we've seen downstairs. I'm not gonna say it's not a shame that there's no infinity room in this one. It was kind of expected, at least from my end, but I think the current installation by Studio Irma really fills in the shoes. All in all, I really enjoyed my time here, although it was quite short. As a museum, the collection is pretty limited, to be honest, and I have to confess that I was negatively surprised when I thought I was midway and suddenly I find myself in the museum's shop, but that's probably also because I enjoyed the way so much that I didn't really feel the passing of time. To be honest, one factor that contributes to that is these loud, direct, quick, face value way that contemporary art has to pass through the message. These are not the types of work that you're gonna want to spend hours analyzing in detail as you may do in the National Gallery or anywhere like that. And that's fine. I actually think that is exactly the value that Mocha brings to the table.